and hello everybody this is Taff so the lighting's a little bit bad but um, this is me in my car again because I didn't have time to do my uh, my forest green blog last night but there we go um, at least I'm getting something out there um, people are calling the forest green game one of the best performances um, of recent county times um, yeah the, the, the scoreline would certainly suggest that I mean by no means, I don't think it was a better performance than we've given throughout this season. I think we've always made chances. We've always played that kind of football. I just think we finally found the way of being a bit more clinical. And if we can keep hold of that, then God help the rest of the league too for the rest of this season. Because <clears throat> we've played some of the better teams in this division so far. And we've made chances against them. It's just obviously the better teams also make chances against us. I think our ability to keep the ball out of the net is obviously a good one if you consider the fact Luton have beaten Yeovil 8-2 and Stephen is 7-1. The fact that we lost 3-1 there, um, it doesn't look like that bad of a scoreline to be honest with you. It was poorly as we played as well, so our ability to keep that ball out of that net is it is it's good because they meant the clean sheets we've kept this season as well. And the fact that when we have won games we've only really conceded one at a time as well i mean i mean I, i'm not going to go through listing all the games and all the clean sheets we've kept and the times we've only conceded the one when we scored more but the fact is we've won again we've kept another clean sheet and we've scored four this time which is our be our sec uh, well we scored four against chesterfield and obviously we've scored four again now um, I think it just goes to show that we can score the goals. Um, we make the chances, and like on Tuesday night, it was very frustrating against uh, Swansea, um, the under twenty ones, twenty threes, or whatever they were. Um, it's it, it it was frustrating because we created so many chances. Um, you know, we shouldn't really have lost that game. You know, on the back of the chances that we created, but the fact is, Flinny said that when we click. We're going to give someone a battering. Well, we've done that now. We're taking things a step at a time. Considering where we were last season, we're not far off the same points total as what we had when Flinney first took over. I'm sure there was something like 28, 29 we had. And now we're on, I think, it's 24. So, <laughs> I mean, we're only... We're not even a third, of a third through the season and we're already, bet we're already going to be bettering our March total. It's pretty astounding, really, isn't it, when you think about it? Absolutely amazing how far we've come in such a short space of time. But before this weekend's fixtures, from last weekend, um, it showed every team in the, in, in, the, in the three teams below the Premier League, every team um, who was in first place occupied 23rd at the same point last season. So Cardiff... At this point last season, they were in 23rd. Well, before this weekend's games, um, they were top of the league before this weekend. And they finished, they were in 23rd this point, that point last season. Shrewsbury, top of the league, 23rd at the same point last season. And then Exeter. Um, I think something should be said about this because we were 24th at this point last season. Um, we saved ourselves from relegation by the skin of our teeth. And now we're in a playoff place. We're in sixth. It's astounding. It just goes to show that recruitment was never really an issue for us. Although we did have some bangers, really, didn't we? Um, I was talking to Sean Riggs' dad, funny enough, on um, last Tuesday night. And he was saying that Jenison Murray Williams used to play with Sean at Port Vale. And he said that he was unbelievable. He was unplayable at times because he was that good. So I'm thinking, well, why wasn't he that good for us? Is it because he didn't care? Is it because he lost confidence? I don't know. But I mean, players who bring players who were supposed who on paper saying like they're going to be good players, but they're bangers, um, like Jack Compton, for example, <laughs> as well. And then you go back, and then you look at players like um, I wouldn't say Medialito because Medialito was pretty pretty good, but um, and like I say, we. We've signed some bangers and we've given people, especially in the defensive areas, too much responsibility and too much trust. And they've let us down in the past. And our defence is sordid now. I mean, Ben White has got to be signing of the season. I know he's only on loan. But what an absolute diamond that boy is. 
I mean, yeah, against Luton he had a tough time. That's the only time he's had a tough time because he stood eight again to me this weekend. And Ben Toza's like having a whole new signing in the centre of midfield because what a player he is, now. Absolutely unbelievable the way he's playing for us, now. Labadi is, is, is the perfect captain. I, I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, Sean Rigg plays well when he plays. Um, Matt Dolan plays well when he plays. All of them have got strengths. All of them have got strengths. All of them have got weaknesses. They pick each other up on their weaknesses and they get given a free run to do what they do best. I mean, Matt Dolan's like your quarterback kind of um, distributor of passes, and he does that extremely well. Labardi is a hard... He's, he's, he's like... The, I've referred to him as the Steven Gerrard of League Two. Um, he he did, does it all. He scores goals. He goes in for challenges. He breaks up their play. He, 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 he distributes the play really well. He can dribble as well. League Two's Steven Gerrard without a shadow of a doubt, and then, and then you move on to I mean Newblade's going through a bit of a goal rate at the moment, but he's very much at the heart of a lot of our play. Obviously, he's setting up the second goal the way that he did. He's he's a danger. He's a pain in the ass. I mean, if Ammon's going to score all the goals, Newblade gets fifteen this season. Ammon gets twenty five. We could get promoted, and I, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm 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 one of the first people that's saying. Be realistic. Don't get don't don't get ahead of yourself. We're doing well. Um, just take it a game at a time and enjoy it. But I'm actually starting to really believe we can actually get promoted through the playoffs, through the top three. We're only five points shy of top spot. And if we keep winning games, teams above us and around us are dropping points. Who knows? We've got the team, we've got the squad, we've got strength and depth. We've got players like Sean Mikulski coming off the bench to score goals. We've got players like Lamar Reynolds, who potentially can be one of the biggest handfuls of league, in the whole of League Two. I mean, he, he's finding it hard to come off the bench to, you know, to, to get game time. I mean, we've got players like Sean Rigg coming off the bench, Tom Owen Evans coming off the bench. It's, it's unbelievable, you know? Um, you know, that the squad depth that we've got. I mean, it's something that we've never really had. Um, you know, we've always had a good starting eleven. Um, I felt, except for the last two years, I think well, we had players who were good, but we never really had. The, you know, we, we never really had the right direction. The only time we've had a decent enough manager since Justin Edinburgh left was John Sheridan, up until Flynn took over at the end of last season. And what an absolute diamond he is. Flynny though, I mean, he's getting it so right all the time. I mean, he's taken a little bit of criticism, completely unwanted in my opinion. But like I say, free speech, you know, people like to say what they want, that's fair enough. But um, I think unwarranted um, criticism, I mean, we're in League Two, you know, we're not Barcelona, you know, in La Liga, we're losing a game is the end of the world. With us, we're in League Two, we're going to, we know we're going to lose. 10, 10 to 15 games throughout the season, probably. Um, everybody does it. I mean, even the teams that finish in the top three always end up losing at least 10 games. I mean, it's just League Two for you. I mean, if, if, if we can only lose 10 games throughout the season, we'll get promoted. And at the moment, we've only lost three. I know Morgan was a poor one. Um, I know Luton, we play particularly badly. But um, other than that, I think in, in the games that we haven't won... We've been really, really unlucky, in a, you know, in, in in a lot of in a lot of instances, and I think Morgan. I I don't know. I can't say much for Morgan because I weren't there. Um, I think uh, Luton is just one of those things. Luton are going to win this league, as far as I'm concerned. I thought Exeter to finish top three potentially, not 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 County to finish top three potentially, but Luton are a dead cert in my opinion. They they're, they're just absolutely fantastic. They they they're just too good. Um, no, they're not really going to get stopped. I don't think. Absolutely not. But um, look, our home record, we've made a fortress out of Ronnie Parade. An absolute fortress. And I, I can say that, that there's not a lot that can really stop us. If we keep doing what we're doing, and if we don't get found out, because there are teams out there that that, that can find you out, um, you know, if they're tactically right. I mean, people like Gareth Ainsworth at Wickham, they, they they always get the tactics right, um, and 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 they're a very very difficult team to beat. But um, that's just an example of where the kind of instances where we can fall short. I just think at the moment we're just 
destined for. Oh, I think we're destined for, for, for a very, very good season. And I'll tell you something, we bloody deserve it after the last two years. Um, people talking about Flinney um, potentially moving on to a bigger club. So, look, Muggle Flynn hasn't completed a full season in football league management yet. So that's going to be the thought process of potential suitors for him. Um, if you look at... Other fan zone teams that that have got close connected managers like Gareth Ainsworth at Wickham, like Tidsdale at Exeter, what's stopping them coming in for for people like that first who've been doing it for about three or four years? Uh, Tidsdale for a lot longer than that at the one club. Tidsdale has built a great club out of Exeter, um, and they'll if they don't go up this year, they'll be there or thereabouts again next year because. They're bringing players through. They're bleeding them through their through their team really well, and they're selling them on for a lot of money. They're making a lot of money on players at the moment, and Tisdale is a big part of that. Why wouldn't someone take a punt on him, considering what he's done? Um, Gareth Ainsworth at Wickham. Why wouldn't someone take a punt on him? And even Kevin Nolan. Kevin Nolan has got a full a full season behind him, and he's doing well at Notts County. Why wouldn't someone come in for him first as well? You know what I mean? I mean, people are saying that you know, they're worrying about Flinney moving on, but there are better suitors out there for clubs than Flinney. Uh, Flinney haven't done a full season, and besides, would he go as well? Because if you look at the kind of calibre of clubs that were coming for him, look what happened to Justin Edinburgh when he thought the grass would be greener. John Sheridan as well. The grass isn't always green on the other side. You find a good fit for you, then you've got to keep hold of that, because you move on, you, 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 you think too ambitiously, then... It, you could fall flat in your face. I mean, you, you turn that corner, you could t- you could walk into a nightmare. Justin Edinburgh looked like he was going to do well, but no nightmare. He's now lost his Gillingham job. He's now lost his Northampton job, and now he's being linked with clubs back in the conference. So he's taken a big step down. Dean Oldsworth thought jumping into the football league from us would be a good move. What's he doing now? John Sheridan. John Sheridan has had. Is it? Oldham, then Notts County, then back to Oldham and still losing his job again. Look, you find a good fit, you got to keep hold of it. And then if the right club comes, if the right club with the right project that suits you and the risk is low, then then move on. But what's stopping Flinney building something with us? Flinney said himself he sees us potentially as a championship club in the future. Why don't he be a part of taking us there, you know? It's worth thinking about, but if you're if you're worried about Flinney moving on, don't get worried right 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 now. Um, like, well, wait wait for a couple of years of him doing well for us before before someone thinks. Tell you why he's doing good down there. I'm gonna you know we we're, we're gonna make him our next manager, and if it is a, a a worthy jump up, then fair enough to him. But I can see us being in League One sometime soon, sometime in the next two or three years with Flinney there, and until he does that, I don't think he's gonna be getting poached anytime soon. Because poaching from League 2 doesn't always work. Sometimes it does, but not always. And Justin Edinburgh is the perfect example of that. So we'll wait and see anyway, guys. Anyway, for all of you now, you're going to see this through the day. Tonight, I will be live streaming the FA Cup draw and giving reactions. And um, there may not be a Taft's Word live because of that then tonight. Um, There may not be a live at 10. But a live stream of the of the draw will be happening at I think it's seven o'clock. So I'll put the links out anyway. I'll get the stream sorted out ten minutes before and put the links out everywhere. Um, like I say there's no Taft's word at ten o'clock tonight. Okay. Thank you all. Like I say, Newport County. We're doing well at the moment. Let's just sit back, take it a game at a time, and just enjoy the ride. And I'll see you all tomorrow night. Thank you all. Up the county, cheerio.